To the casual observer, Tough Mudder represents strength. But strength is not measured in how fast we run or how high we climb. Strength comes from within. It is part of our character. Our bodies are nothing more than energy, will, and a drive to not only survive, but to evolve into something greater than ourselves. All of that that you have done this year and all of that life that you bring to this event is in full effect right now. 24 hours. Let's go, let's go! 100 miles. This is not a sprint, this is an endurance event. The greatest test of endurance on the planet. We are people that have something inside of us that cannot be denied. As the minutes and hours roll by, Time is ticking. On terrain that is desolate and unforgiving. It's gonna get cold fast. Day gives way to night. And soon there are only the elements, the obstacles, the clock, and the purest expression of humanity that drive to push forward. John, go. Woo. In this community, what cannot be done is only a pit stop on the path to what will be done. Push. Go, 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 go. These are the athletes. These are their stories. Together as one. competitors from 17 countries. The sun is rising on world's toughest mutter. This 24-hour endurance test to find the toughest humans on the planet features the biggest and most extreme obstacle course known to man. There are three divisions of competition, men, women, and two-person teams. The athletes who complete the most miles in 24 hours in each division win $10,000. This year, the winning team that also completes at least 100 miles receives a bonus of $100,000. Only a handful of elite athletes will compete to win, and most of them have experience either winning at world's toughest, like two-time champion Jun Young Pak, or coming very close, like last year's men's runner-up, Trevor Sykos. My first mistake last year was breakfast, actually. I ordered breakfast from the hotel, and I ordered smoked salmon with pita bread and yogurt, which is a very good combination. Keeping it simple and high in carbs will be my recipe to win this year. On the women's side, an injury to three-time winner Amelia Boone opens the door for her friend, last year's runner-up, Sarah Knight. I feel like I'm still a rookie. <laughs> exactly. Last year, it was my first Tough Mudder ever. To win this race would feel like the ultimate. 2015 team winners Ryan Atkins and John Alban are heavy favorites again this year. And their biggest challengers include teammates Robert Killian and last year's men's individual winner, Chad Trammell. Goal is absolutely to win and break 100 miles, but even then there's a chance of hitting 100 and still losing. But these elite competitors are only part of the story of world's toughest mutter. This event is open to athletes of all levels. And for most of these non-elites, winning means pushing their physical limits to achieve their personal best. This year, because it's bigger than all other events, I came as prepared as I could. And if I have to, I even got crutches. So if uh, I gotta finish it up on crutches, I'll finish it up on crutches. Whether striving to complete the celebrated 50-mile plateau or a near superhuman 100 miles, every athlete in Mudder Nation has their own path to follow but all paths ultimately lead to one place on race day, the pit. The pit is an oasis in the desert of world's toughest. All right, the pit, home sweet home. Each athlete gets a space in the pit where they can refuel, change clothes, escape the elements, 
and receive encouragement from their pit crew and the Mudder community. This is where the teamwork begins. Yes. There's energy, there's craziness, there's laughter, seeing faces we haven't seen in a bit, all the people that we hang out with all season long. Oh. Coach and E-Rock are special to the Mudder community. They're not only tough competitors themselves, they motivate other athletes as official Tough Mudder trainers at regional events around the country. Most of these people that Coach and I have met Previously, we know their backstories. We know what they've come through and what they've accomplished to be here at World Toughest. It's awe-inspiring. Today, Coach and E-Rock's goal of completing 50 miles is powered by something bigger than themselves. A good friend of mine, who this would be his fifth World's Toughest Mudder, he passed away in an accident on a mountain. Uh, he always wanted a 50-mile bib. So I actually have a little bit of his ashes that I'm gonna carry with me on course. And uh, if I could bring his wife home a, a brown 50 mile bib, that would be a giant success. <laughs> Solid, dude. All right. Everybody takes care of everybody. Can I do this? Hell yeah, man. Everybody will lift them up. <laughs> the camaraderie, the community here, you won't find it anywhere else. That one's it. Yeah. See you out there. See out there. I know, it's gonna be fun. Okay, the last time you'll see it. As the pit crowd grows, competitor Tiffany Ob breaks from her race prep for a moment of camaraderie with a purpose. I've been fundraising for uh, childhood cancer research. I will be joining the rest of the St. Baldrick's team and I will be shaving my hair. Welcome to the St. Baldrick's World's Toughest Mudder Head Shave. The first thought that came through my head when I was told that I had cancer was, oh my God, I can't lose my hair. Being a redhead growing up, you were teased. Carrot Top, Annie, you know, all the names. And as an adult, it became my identity and kind of who I am. Tiffany Ah, uh, and today is my one year cancer free. We all kind of have a history or a past. But we're all out there on the course giving it our all, and we're doing it together. I was in the Navy for almost nine years, and Tough Mudder is the closest thing that I've had since that. Oh my God! <laughs> I know I have people behind me, and uh, I have the strength within me because I'm here, and I've already been through so much. Hey, I need to look for the race. We are people that have something inside of us that cannot be denied. Something inside of us that when we are out here doing our best, working hard, we feel it. We find our best. It's nearly start time, and the energy in the pit is rising. Waiting over the first steep ridge are 21 of Tough Mudder's most grueling obstacles including four new obstacles for Tough Mudder's 2017 regular season that these athletes will be experiencing for the first time. This year, I'm hoping to break 100 miles, but I won't stop there. I like to finish on the podium, so if I get to 100, I'll keep going, obviously. Everything that I've done for the last year is coming to this one event. Can I do this? Am I gonna be able to complete it? Oh, the energy is phenomenal. It's, it's electric. So excited to go out to the unknown. All of that that you have done this year and all of that life that you bring to this event, it's in full effect right now, yeah. <laughs> DJ, let's get him out of here. Let's go, let's go! Let's go. Crush it, crush it! This is race record for control. We don't have eyes on them, so I think there's something up. CBS Sports Spectacular, World's Toughest Mudder on CBS Sports is sponsored by the U.S. Army. Find out more at GoArmy.com. Crush it, crush it! Beyond the starting line is a world of unknowns. Let's go, let's go! Racers are greeted with a five-mile loop of rugged, unrelenting terrain. All right, keep going, babe. All right. Until this moment, 
The true layout and makeup of the obstacles has been a well-kept secret. Mac, how you doing, man? Awesome. Having fun? Yeah, I feel like I just did five miles. The first lap is a sprint with the obstacles not yet open for competitors. This gives elite men's athletes like Trevor Sykos, Nicodemus Holland, and Jun Young Pak an early chance to separate themselves from the field and get out to a fast start that they hope will pay dividends later as the grind sets in. The hardest part is the start of the race. I got 24 hours of running. I'm gonna be wet within, you know, the second hour, and then I just know it's gonna suck. I'm ahead of schedule, but I'm feeling strong, so. I'll slow down a little bit. And then once I start running, it takes me about 10, 15 minutes to get in the zone, but once I'm there, it's all good. You know, I get 100 this year, I'm feeling it. And then the obstacles open. Feeling great now. Yeah. Yeah, I love obstacles. So when they finally opened up, feeling alive. Many obstacles have been engineered and refined over time to whittle away at physical strength, agility, and endurance. If you're starting to have a hard time with an obstacle, you know that you're on your way back around to see it again. And you know you're on your way back around to see it again. And you know you're on your way back around to see it again. And that's gonna get you mentally. Others prey on basic human fears, claustrophobia, and darkness, dizzying heights, biting elements. Ah, it was a little cold. <laughs> but at least my hair's gone, you know. Spin it up a little bit. Okay, you got it. Pull it. And even electrical shock. Ah. Pretty crazy, you're standing in water playing that little Operation Doctor game where you're like reaching in, you don't want to hit the little edges or you're gonna get shocked. Okay, let go, let go, step out, step out. So then you turn around frustrated and you gotta go do a penalty lap. And so, uh, yeah, not really looking forward to that one. If you're afraid of cold water, if you're afraid of electricity, if you're afraid of heights, if you're you know afraid of all those things, you're gonna have to face your fears on this course because that's what you're gonna be seeing every single lap. In true Tough Mudder fashion, there are also some behemoths like Everest and Backstabber, for which teamwork is crucial to advance. How are you guys doing? Hey, man, doing good. Hey. What lap is this? This is two. Two? You think it's what it is? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, man. How are you guys doing? Great. As the hours roll on, the crushing repetition of course obstacles over each five-mile stretch is meant to intimidate, discourage, and eventually break these athletes. Sometimes people assume I need that extra hand or that extra help, and uh, I don't get mad, you know? Like, I mean, that's awesome. They wanna be helpful. Like, I mean, that's a good thing. You don't wanna discourage people from helping others. Usually if they're around me long enough, you know, maybe 30 seconds or a little longer, they realize like, yeah, I got it. I actually can offer them probably an extra hand. Come on, Dan. Good job, bro. For most, early enthusiasm for the obstacles starts to wane as the day goes on. However, the elite team of John Alban and Ryan Atkins view the obstacles as a key part of their strategy. John and I have really focused on training those specific elements of our race. The two of us do a lot of rock climbing. We did some climbing when we were training together. I think Ryan Atkins is the legend of not only Tough Mudder, but all obstacle races out there how good you are together and your team dynamics really play a massive part. Atkins is the only person to ever do 100 miles at world's toughest, so his team is favored. But their biggest challengers are right on their heels. Let's go! Army Ranger Robert Killian is partnering this year with 2015 men's champion Chad Trammell as the elite Team America. I'm a military vet, um, you know, I've been to combat, I've been to war, so I think that's what will kind of drive me through the day. He actually raced against me as an individual last year, and I was really surprised that he didn't win it. Goal is absolutely to break 100 miles, make sure we're the first team. Grab behind Atkins, huh? All right. Yeah, we've been leapfrogging a little. Lap you on. Four. Uh, lap four. Still early. At the 
20 mile mark. Men's leader Jun Young Pak. The pills. Ibuprofen in there. Women's leader Stephanie Bishop. I'm trying to like get into a good rhythm. I feel like I'm still going too fast. And elite contenders like Trevor Psychos are all now fully in the groove. We're about three and a half hours into the race and the sun's starting to go down, so I'm contemplating doing one more lap or next pit, get my wetsuit on. We'll see. You don't want to do it when you're cold. You want to do it right before you start to get cold. If you do it when you're cold, you're not going to recover from that. Everest 2.0 is an obstacle that has become a staple of world's toughest mudder. From a distance, it might look like the average quarter pipe, but slicked up and deeply curved on top, this 15-foot monster is unbeatable without teamwork. Even elite athletes must rely on their fellow competitors for a hand up, and they always offer one in return. I've trained my butt off for this race. This is my third time back at World's Toughest Mudder Sauna, so I'm really hoping to just finish my sort of vendetta that, that I built up with the race in 2014, where uh, I, I kind of dropped out of the race at mile 55. Even with major roadblocks like Everest, Nicodemus Holland is keeping a much faster pace than he initially planned in order to stay on the heels of Jun Young Pak. It's really easy to get caught up with, well, I gotta keep up with him, always oh, getting 10 minutes ahead of me, always oh, five minutes ahead of me. I am definitely infected by that. And um, really trying to quell that ego and just to say, okay, race your own race, focus on your own plan and everything. Go get it, Pac. Dusk is a time of transition on the world's toughest mutter course, a time where the decisions made in the pit take on vital importance. I'm gonna go in now and put on my wetsuit because I have a feeling the temperature's gonna drop very quickly and I don't wanna get hypothermia. Yeah. Stephanie Bishop has taken the women's lead at 20 miles in. Having signed up for World's Toughest only 48 hours before the race, her presence on top of the leaderboard is a surprise to everyone. I have never done the World's Toughest Mudder. Get that on over your shoes. I have a pretty extensive background in endurance racing. Next time around, I want like solid food. Start giving me warm liquids starting next yeah. lap. Every lap I want something warm yeah. to keep me hot. And then last year, I was diagnosed with Lyme disease. I thankfully caught it early enough to treat it. And I ended up having to cut my season short. Time is ticking. You got this. Coming into this year, I know that I have the strength and I have the endurance. I'm going. My goal this year is to win World's Toughest Mudder. It means a lot to me. Pit stops are crucial but also mean a potential loss of pace, something Team America can't afford. Man, we're just flying. After 25 miles, they've pulled slightly ahead of Team Goat Tough, who are still on the course. Current men's leader, Jun Young Pak, is aware of this trade-off as well. More donut? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Actually, I'll, I'll take it with me. Take it. He's not taking any rest in the pit. He's been coming in, getting more fuel, and going back out. That's really the key for him, is staying on top of his nutrition, making sure he's getting enough calories, electrolytes. Um, but he, I don't anticipate any long pit stops for him. The hours spent under the relentless Nevada sun have already taken their toll. Now, as the sun quickly sets, Athletes know that getting through the coming night will depend mostly on the mental toughness that got them to this point. So that's my sixth lap, and just change to a wetsuit, get ahead of the cold, because the uh, temperature drops fast out here. It's gonna get hard here soon. Your hands are wet, upper body is tired. It's gonna be a lot harder to complete these obstacles. Goes from light to straight up darkness here, so. And with that, since we're in a desert, it's gonna get cold fast. The night is just beginning. The desert is two extremes. It's hot in the day and very cold at night. Ah! As darkness falls over the world's toughest mutter course,
competitors brace themselves for the night ahead. Most people have a great time in the first two laps, but once that sun drops behind the hills, it's, it's a whole other world. The desert landscape transforms into a collage of bobbing white and red lights. The obstacles are starting to show the effects of the elements as well. Grips are slippery. Trails are wet. Mistakes are easier to make and harder to recover from. That's the time where you go inside your head and, and you got to really dig deep. Six hours into the race, elite athlete Sarah Knight is hitting a wall, finding it hard to perform as well as she did in the daytime. Ah. I feel pretty weak, and uh, it's like no way around it. I can't get up and over it without help. Three unsuccessful attempts on the grappler lead to a half-mile penalty lap, an extra distance all competitors must run when they fail to complete an obstacle. Just as the obstacles, course, and terrain take on a new dimension at night, the pit also transforms. Many in Mudder Nation tend to pace down, even taking extended breaks. But those who are contenders know that the period of time called Black Ops between 5 p.m. and 5 a.m. is often when this race is won or lost. You want some gels? Good, good. The hills are starting to get to me. I'm starting to walk the hills, but I'm feeling good. After nearly 40 miles over seven hours, the two top teams are only six minutes apart. Trammell and Killian refuel in order to quickly rebound from a couple of costly mental errors. Trying to get some calories. No, I don't want to. The obstacles this year look extremely difficult as far as grip strength, too. They're a lot more technical than last year, a lot more monkey bars, a lot more having to specialize in agility and not just running in endurance. Chad won last year. This is only my second year ever doing obstacle course racing. I think, you know, that's one of the things is that may limit us a little bit. While Atkins and Alban display a quiet confidence. No, just moving for 24 hours, I think will be the hardest obstacle. Having completed every obstacle so far, they have avoided penalties and are able to keep a comfortable pace. We didn't spend much time in the pits at all. We never sat down. We would just stand and eat in the pit, eat a little, drink a little, and then get out there as quickly as possible. We're set up right there. The long night also reveals new contenders emerging. Uh, yeah, same shoes. Strong athletes who still see a shot most often look to gain ground. In the case of young Austin Azar, it's all about design. I was kind of conserving myself a little bit for uh, night ops. My plan was to start a little bit slower than usual and then go really hard during the night. My goal is just to push my limits, get as many miles in, in as I could for the rest of black ops and close the gap on the leaders. Azar's strategy is mirrored on the women's side by April Hartwig, who learned it the hard way. How does it feel being the top three right now? It doesn't mean anything right now. The night is just beginning. Last year, I came out of the gates like a bat out of hell, and uh, then the wheels just came off. So I was just trying to stick to a plan of being conservative this year and just, you know, just running my own race. April Hartwig has been at or near the top of the leaderboard throughout the afternoon and early evening despite being a competitor whose life outside the event is not completely defined by training. I'm a mom of two, 13 and nine, and I'm a school bus driver uh, in Colorado Springs, and I drive for um, District 20. She represents the everyday people here who push themselves beyond any boundaries they thought they had. <sighs> We're way ahead of schedule compared to last year. You got me in the foxhole, you better have her with you, man, because she'll, she'll throw down with you. While Stephanie Bishop continues to lead the women's field at the 35-mile mark, April and her intense team are paying close attention to the standings. We're going to eat on the go and drink on the go and get out of here. Go, and are far from finished. That's just the way she does business, man. You're not going to find somebody more mentally focused and tough than, than her, guaranteed.
We wanted to go for first, and that was the plan. There was no B plan. It was, let's go, all or nothing. It's just intense, because you want to try to close that gap. And this race doesn't start till like, midnight. Every athlete in world's toughest mutter is aware when the clock strikes midnight. That is when the runners must adapt to the most significant and dreaded change to the course. The opening of a treacherous 35-foot drop into freezing murky waters known simply as the cliff. The cliff is currently playing mind games with athlete Lindsay Webster, who until this point has been in the top 10 for the women. And it's like half a mile, the penalty. Oh, yes. So you definitely don't want to do that. It just takes two seconds. Okay. Cross your arms. Maybe hold on to your arms. Yeah. And then when you start to tap your head, so we know you're okay. <laughs> Even 12 hours into world's toughest mutter, the course is still surprising competitors who must contend with not only physical exhaustion, but mental torment. Oh, <laughs> I really don't like this. For Atkins and Alban, two of the most successful obstacle course racers ever, a shared training ethic and strong friendship are important elements in their success, particularly during a phase of the race that breaks down the pace of even the best mutter athletes. We passed Team America somewhere around lap seven. Our team was succeeding the obstacle, whereas the Team America was failing. Just because John and I have really focused on, you know, training those specific elements of our race. For the first eight laps, Trammell and Killian traded leads with Atkins and Alban as the two teams stayed within minutes of each other. However, with dawn approaching, Trammell and Killian are now a full lap behind and starting to feel the net effect of losing approximately 10 minutes per lap over the last seven laps due to penalties and a slowing pace. These are wet obstacles have definitely given Robert and I some trouble today. They weren't really tough early, but then once it got wet. The idea of being the weakest link as a teammate just terrifies me, being the person who's holding the team back. It's going to be really tough to say, hey, I need to slow down. You have ups and downs throughout the race you have low points. Sunrise is a special moment on the world's toughest mutter course. The drudgery and difficulty of the night recede, and the light of day brings a renewed sense of purpose and possibility. But not every competitor greets the sun with optimism. Jun Young Pak and Nicodemus Holland have both slipped out of contention. Their early frenetic pace during the first 12 hours slowly faded in the dark. I sat at the, uh, at the pit for almost two hours, like just wanting to quit and be done. Sitting there with my crew, went and took a hot shower ate and everything, and I was just toast. Really, I think it was just a matter that I went out too fast and I burned out my legs. That's a novice mistake for someone who's done uh, these kinds of races for eight years. So that's the sad end of my story this year, but uh, yeah, I'll probably be back. For those whose definition of winning is different than the elite athletes, Hitting a 50-mile goal can bring about as much emotion as winning it all. One of our members of World's Toughest Community, he passed away over the summer. You did it, coach! He had an accident on a mountain and, and fell. He's always had a goal of 50 miles, and I'm carrying a little bit of his ashes with me. This event is so long, and the emotions are such a roller coaster that those little things in the back of our heads are helpful to get us through those low points. 
Vernon. He's a professional photographer, and his last text to his wife, he was on mountaintop, was waiting for the light. And when the sun came up on the sun lap, Vernon went with me for his 50th mile. Nice job. That's 10. That's 10. And then, and then we're going to take him further. Congratulations. Because we keep going. We're not going to stop. Because you go to the end. And you take it further than you ever thought you could go. Because that's what Tough Mudder is about. Still feeling good. In the women's competition, it is now obvious that Sarah Knight's goal of winning this year is all but lost. So after lap 10 is when I pulled myself out. Very disappointed that it had to end this way. I mean, I know there's always next year. April Hartwig and her coach, Yancey Culp, are bolstered by the last two five-mile laps that have helped her significantly close the gap, moving from nearly two hours behind Stephanie Bishop at midnight to a mere 40 minutes now. It may not be visible at first glance, but April and her crew remain confident. This is the pit. Hi, this is the pit. No, no, no. About 42 minutes right now. Take a bite, take a bite. She's definitely on pace to get three more laps in, so, you know, a 40-minute lead is just, it can be vaporized in no time. We've got about 30 seconds and we're back out. Over the next few laps, we just got to keep buying time. 20 seconds, we're back out. You get it, you done. Got to go right now. This is the point now where anybody that's jogging, that's it, you're here now, let's go, is just taking huge, huge chunks of times off. April, every opportunity you can jog, you got to be jogging. Let's go. Oh, down the hill, down the hill, go. Let's go. Come on, April. We'll see you at the end. After running the equivalent of three marathons and tackling hundreds of obstacles, it's hard to believe that the men's leader, Trevor Sykos, is just minutes ahead of the second place man, Austin Azar. There's second place. So we went up the hill side by side. He was running and looking really strong. My goal at that point was to not make it an easy win for him. This is one hell of a battle. I was here to get 100 miles, but soon throughout the race, I realized the winner's probably gonna get to 105, so. My new goal was to win it. Yeah, he's gaining. Pushing it beyond the limits. I think I'm getting closer. He's going to keep on pushing. Try to hold on to first place. Slowly gaining on him. Hundreds of competitors have reached their goals of 25 or 50 miles. I gave it my all. I got nothing left. A record number of competitors are still in the hunt to achieve the world's toughest milestone of 100 miles. The two top teams have the 100 mile mark in their sights, as does the men's leader, Trevor Sykos, who has kept a steady pace of 14 minute miles throughout the race. After a surprising late night push, Dark Horse Austin Azar has put himself in that mix as well. This is one hell of a battle. Yeah, he's gaining. He was running and looking really strong. My goal at that point was to not make it an easy win for him. Well done, Great man. fucking battle. You're an animal. You are an animal, too. Over the ladder, he passed me and took off flying. Yeah! Awesome. I think we're running. Oh, man. Nice work, buddy. Thank you. It's definitely really exciting being first place against Trevor and start a little bit slower than usual. And later on the race, I got in kind of a groove and it just about paid off. I feel good. That last lap was really intense. This is my last race of the year, and I wanted to leave it all up there. This has been such a fun race. Yeah, man. He caught up and passed me. Good on you. 
but I'm going to chase you and make you do 110 miles for that win. Dude, awesome. Trevor was right there again, and we're right back into the battle. Okay. Time to go. Take it with you. Take it with you. Uh, no. Trevor's an animal. I passed him, and he didn't seem to get discouraged by that at all. He was still always, you know, right on my tail. How you doing? Um, I'm all right. I don't have that much of a lead. I'm a little nervous. On the women's side, leader Stephanie Bishop has been aware since sunrise of April Hartwig's slow but steady challenge of her lead. I'm just gonna go out and cruise. As she arrives in the pit, April's coach, Yancey Culp, hangs nearby to assess the competition. I have about a 40 minute lead, so I'm just gonna go nice and easy. 40 minutes, you'd have to run nine minutes per mile faster, which would probably be the equivalent of a sprint lap and that's not possible. All right, lady. I'm gonna go. Get out there. On a finishing lap that would otherwise be competitive, Yancey has a moment of clarity that April's chances are fading. The last lap was probably within two to three minutes of each other. I'd say April may gain two minutes, where she was gaining massive chunks, so that was, that girl kind of realized that her lead was dwindling and she, she cranked it up about a half a gear, so we'll see. You gonna try to make 100? After 95 miles, Chad Trammell's body is telling him to quit. No, no I'm all right. Thanks. Let's put this down right here. You guys think you're talking about getting to 100? Yeah, I, I just am so spent out enough I have it in me. And both the win and the $100,000 cash prize are now out of reach. Ryan Atkins and John Alden are the first team to accomplish the 100-mile plateau. Their determination has not only resulted in the fastest time to 100 miles in Tough Mudder history, it has built them an insurmountable lead. But the full 24 hours are not done, so their race isn't over yet. Congratulations. Every obstacle, every hill, every word of encouragement, it's been <laughs> monumental. Ryan's like a diesel engine, he just like grinds away sort of thing, so I just try to mimic that. It's not just how strong you are as individuals in this event, it was a team event uh, where how good you are together and your team dynamics really play a massive part. We've done 10 miles in an hour before. That's what I get for partnering with the Ranger. The win is out of reach, but a lap about honor means just as much. We've come this far, we can't can't stop now. To be honest, I didn't want to, but Robert just talked me into it. I've got a um, an inspirational coach in college that kind of mentored me a lot, and uh, he passed away Friday. So one of my best friends uh, sent me a message and was like, with a picture of us in Costa Rica, <laughs> and he was like, hey, you know, put in 100 miles for coach, so I'm gonna do it no matter How what. How can I say no to that? <laughs> I was starting to feel a little exhausted at that point. Not. Trevor's still right behind me. There's a different type of pressure when your competitor's right behind you pushing the pace, so. And was still feeling good the next couple miles until about mile 98. I wasn't sure if it was heat exhaustion or what, but I've never hit the wall so hard in my life. Any update on getting eyes on Austin? I think there's something up. Is there a medical team dispatched? He's somewhere between mile four and five. Any update on getting eyes on Austin? I wasn't sure if it was heat exhaustion or what, but I've never hit the wall so hard. I'd never felt so out of it in my life. I was just literally thinking that I was gonna die. Uh, 
Is there a medical team dispatched? He's somewhere between mile four and five. We're trying to locate him. In true Tough Mudder fashion, two complete strangers take it upon themselves to ensure Austin can finish this lap and get 100 miles. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure okay. he goes to it. Sure it was just awesome to see that in the community. Everyone was super generous and like, didn't hesitate to offer help. Miguel, put a hat on him. Hat. Austin Azar, having already completed 100 miles, must contemplate what going back out there will do to his body. I know. We got I know. Oh. In order to be a finisher, you have to be in active pursuit of a lap past noon. I had crossed the finish line of my 100th mile around 11, 15. You're good, you're good, you're good. Technically, if I didn't go out for that last lap for 105, I would have been disqualified. Keep that up, get checked by medical, and just start moving. I was definitely pretty out of it. Uh, let's get you for a bit. You're gonna have to man up and go out for another lap just to keep that kid from getting you. Are you good with answering good. questions like, what's you your birthday? You, what you, you wanna put your jacket kind of on? Yeah. The medics were pretty concerned about my state. How are you feeling? And don't let them answer for you. I am pretty lightheaded, dizzy. <laughs> and they could tell I was really out of it. How many more laps do you anticipate doing? Or would you like to do? Let's start that. The most one, but. I had to go out for that last lap. Go for it. Got more. All right. Thank you. Thank you. World's yeah. toughest mutter shows us the very limit of what the human body can achieve. On that edge, you are able to witness the lowest lows and the highest highs. Austin Azar's sudden decline in mile 98 clears the way for a fitting end to one of the most amazing performances in the history of world's toughest mutter. Trevor Sykos crosses the finish line as a member of the exclusive 100 mile club and as 2016's men's champion. Stephanie Bishop last left the pit with her first realization that she can control her own destiny. She returns a champion, finishing 85 miles and winning the women's title in her first World's Toughest Mudder. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> the elite team of John Alban and Ryan Atkins win this year's team competition and they accomplish what many thought was impossible, 105 miles at world's toughest mutter. A single day in its most literal form can define an entire life. Well done, well done. Everything about world's toughest mutter has purpose, from its awe-inspiring length to every last element of punishment along the way the starkness of the desert setting, the creative ruthlessness of the obstacles. The indispensability of every competitor to one another. The idea that a test can redefine every conceivable notion of what's possible. They plan for pain and then embrace that pain as motivation with every passing mile. They accept the struggle and embrace what it does to them. They resolve that together they're capable of so much more than they are alone. On the one day they want to define their entire lives at World's Toughest Mutter.